life on Earth has existed for billions of years, and this has been possible because it recycles everything. From molecules like water and carbon dioxide, to individual atoms like nitrogen, phosphorus, and carbon. Because of all of this recycling, atoms can be used over and over again to make loads of different organisms over millions and millions of years. In fact, of the estimated 6 octillion atoms, or 6,000 trillion trillion atoms that you have inside you right now, you have countless atoms that have been in oceans, volcanoes, other animals, and even other humans, that have been recycled and are now inside you. All of these different molecules and elements have different cycles, but the two we're going to cover are the water cycle and the carbon cycle. For the water cycle, let's imagine a typical environment, which includes some land and some water. Because it's a cycle, we can start our explanation anywhere. So let's say that the first step is that energy from the sun comes down and causes some of the water to evaporate. So this could be water from lakes, oceans, rivers, but also water on land, for example water in puddles or water in the soil. And don't forget that there will also be evaporation of water from the leaves of plants, which we call transpiration. So now we've basically taken lots of liquid water from the Earth's surface and evaporated it into water vapour in the air. As all of this water vapour accumulates in the sky, it will start to condense into clouds, which can then be blown from one region to another, until at some point the water will fall back down to Earth as liquid water in the form of rain, which we call precipitation. So now that the water has fallen back to Earth, it could seep into the soil, flow into rivers, or be taken up by plants. And then this whole cycle can repeat, all over again. Now the carbon cycle is a bit more complex, and includes a lot more living organisms. The best way to remember the carbon cycle is to think of all the different places where carbon is stored, and then try to remember how it moves between them. Most of the carbon is split between five stores. In the air, where it's carbon dioxide. In plants, where it's locked up in biological molecules. In the soil, which contains lots of bacteria and other microorganisms. In fossil fuels, which are also underground. And of course in animals, where like plants, it's locked up in biological molecules. So now that we know these different stores, Let's look at how carbon moves between them. The most important process is photosynthesis, in which green plants and algae take in the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and convert it into biological molecules like glucose. This carbon that's now locked up inside them can then do two things. It can be passed back out to the atmosphere by respiration, or passed on to animals that eat the plants. And of course, the animals themselves could then also respire to release carbon dioxide. When these plants and animals die, though, two more things can happen to the carbon. One is that the organisms are decayed by microorganisms that live in the warm, moist, aerobic conditions of the soil. This will break them into smaller and smaller pieces until all of the carbon has been released as carbon dioxide during microbial respiration. However, if the dead organisms somehow avoid being decayed like this, and instead are decayed in anaerobic conditions, so without oxygen, then they might slowly be converted into fossil fuels, like oil, natural gas, or coal. And all of these fossil fuels can then be burned by humans to reduce carbon dioxide again. And that's pretty much the carbon cycle, although you could add an arrow for the burning of plants like burning logs in a fire, or burning biofuels in an engine. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, then please do give us a like and subscribe, so we can reach as many people as possible. And we'll see you next time.